Hi everyone. Uh, we're going to continue our look at simple linear regression and the regression guidelines uh, in the context of the problem of the uh, connecting price and odometer reading on vehicles. So uh, remembering the guidelines, we've gone through the first four in the first couple videos on this series. The second, the fifth regression guideline says fully describe the strength of the linear relationship and what percent of the variation in the response variable is attributed to the model, to the regression model that is. The context again is we've got a number of vehicles, I think there's something like a hundred, and these are used vehicles. The price of the vehicles is listed in thousands. The odometer reading, and this is a particular make of vehicle, is listed in the odometer column. The uh, this is bivariate data because I've got two quantitative variables, two pieces of quantitative information on each vehicle. Our goal of simple linear regression is to predict the price of the vehicle from the odometer reading. So the predictor is our odometer reading. What we're trying to predict is our response, which is vehicle price. In an earlier video, we actually constructed the regression line. First of all, we determined that there is a relationship between price and odometer reading, meaning that there is something that's predictable here. So you can make some predictions based, given the odometer reading, I can say something about the about the price. And this is our regression equation, and that's listed, that's given in red. Um, so our red line is our regression equation, right there. And it, it uh, it's a trend line for these data. Now, we've already talked a little bit about the strength of this relationship. Remember the sort of the more tightly clustered these data are about the line, then the higher the correlation, the closer it is to one in absolute value. We already know this is a negative relationship because as odometer increases, the reading increases, the price decreases. That's what's meant by a negative relationship. From our earlier stack crunch output, we knew that the, the correlation was zero negative, 0 0.805, and that's a pretty that's a pretty high. Essentially, the absolute value of negative 0 0.805 is 8, 0 0.805. And that falls in our strong category. Remember, 0 0.7 is less than R, which is less than 1. This is considered a strong relationship. So we've already had some sense that this is a pretty strong relationship. But we can go a little bit farther with that. And the R and its cousin, which we'll call R squared, helps us to do that. So to do that, let's sort of think about this this situation in terms of the of the mean of the y values. So I've drawn that, sort of sketched that in here. We've got y bar, which is the mean of all these y values. If I took all the price, the list of prices and found the sample mean of those, that would give me this y bar. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a particular data value. Let's, look, let's pick this little person out here, or it's a vehicle, I guess. And I'm going to look at the distance from the the value from the observed value y minus the y bar so that would be y i the value minus y bar which is the the sample mean the mean of the y's that total distance is called the variation from y so that is the how much this data value varies from the mean so that is the total variation And notice that this variation is broken down into two parts. This part right here is from the from the mean to the regression line is the part that is explained by the model. That's the model's part. The part from the point itself to the to the from the point to the model itself is called unexplained. That's something that we don't really know. It might be other factors other than just uh, price, or other than just odometer reading that explains the price of the vehicle. So this is unexplained. 
So you can look at the total and you can kind of estimate. Uh, it looks like maybe about 60% of that variation, that total variation, is attributed to the model. So what fraction is really what you're saying? So it looks like about three-fifths of that total variation is of the model, meaning that if you think of the whole as the total, then this portion down here is about three-fifths of the whole, which is about 60% or 0.6. If I do that same process for every point and basically kind of put those together, I'm going to get an overall reading on what percent of this total variation is attributed to my model. What, what components contribute to the model? And that measure is given by what's called r squared, meaning r squared is just the square of the correlation coefficient. So what I would do is I would take the correlation coefficient, and that is the negative 0.805, going out to what, eight decimal places, uh, negative 0.8051678, and I square it, which means multiply it by itself, or take x squared, I get 0 0.6482957. And notice on the StatCrunch printout, here is your correlation coefficient, r, and right below that is its cousin, r squared. And r squared has a special name. It's called the coefficient of determination. Um, the reason for it, in case you're asking, you're wondering, why don't we just look at r? Well, r only applies when you have linear, basically a linear regression. What if I'm doing other things like, like um, sort of nonlinear regression? What if I've got multiple regression? The coefficient of determination can always be calculated. The correlation coefficient sometimes just doesn't make sense. But here's the key with the coefficient of determination, the r squared. What does it tell us? It tells us what percent of the total variation is attributed to that model. And you just have to convert it to a decimal. So I'm going to round it to two decimal places. 0.6483 this is about. That says that 64.83% of the total variation in the vehicle price, the y variable, is explained by that regression model relating price and odometer reading.